In this video, I'm going to take a look at World War 3 and Battlefield 4, putting together a bit of a graphics comparison. Now, of course, BF4 came out a long time ago. It was the back end of 2013 when it was first released, and World War 3 has only just come out in early access. So comparing the two of them is not exactly fair because one is older and, of course, in a full completed condition, while World War 3 is going to change a lot over time. That being said, World War 3's nearest competitor, in my opinion, is Battlefield 4. That's the game that it's looking to emulate and then compete with. I don't really think it's going to compete with the newer Battlefield games because it's just not really on the same level. World War 3 is also very similar to Battlefield 4. It's set in a fairly similar setting, with Battlefield 4 looking at a slightly futuristic World War. You've got weapons that are fairly current, but then you've also got things that are slightly futuristic. The same goes for World War 3. As you can tell, it's set in a modern setting, but maybe a couple of years into the future. And of course, with World War 3, it's something that could possibly happen in the future in real life. Many people have looked at Battlefield 4 and World War 3 and drawn comparisons, which is fair enough. The games do look quite similar. And I'm going to, in the case of Battlefield 4, focus on the urban maps, Seas of Shanghai in particular. I feel as if this is the closest map to World War 3 and therefore the best one to compare to. Battlefield 4, of course, has tons of maps. You've got Goldwood Railway, things like Operation Outbreak, and then, of course, the DLC maps. We're not even going to look at any of the Naval Strike maps or the Final Stand maps. Instead, we'll focus, as I said, on those more urban environments. And I will take a quick look at Operation Metro, bringing a comparison there as well, as one of the World War Three maps does have a Metro section on it that does emulate a bit of what we saw in Battlefield 4 and, I suppose, Battlefield 3. One of the main things I would say about the games is that Battlefield 4 just has a little bit more in terms of destruction. Everything seems to be on a different level to World War 3. World War 3 does look quite good. As you can tell from gameplay in the background, it does look decent. If we take the movement, the FPS, animations, all the things that are really going to change over time and aren't quite on that same level as BF4, the game does look quite good. And if you were to make a cinematic of the game, as often you see, maybe it's part of a montage or maybe it's on its own or maybe it's a game trailer, the games do look very similar and I'm pretty happy with the way World War 3 has turned out. On a different engine, of course, it's on Unreal 4, while Battlefield 4 was on Frostbite 3, the same engine that we're seeing Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 come out on. I still do feel as though World War 3 is a pretty decent looking game. I and mean, it's what I expected to see even in this early access stage. When you compare the vehicles, you can definitely tell that the guys at Farm 51 have done an excellent job in terms of the customization. Although you don't get access to air vehicles, which as you can see from the background in BF4, is a fantastic thing to have access to, and it may come in the future with World War 3, but you currently don't have it, the tanks are great, and the customization is so extensive. The thing with the customization in BF4, although it is there for the vehicles and there's a lot of different options, it doesn't exactly change the presence of the vehicle you can't change the turret and see a difference there are a couple of things like the reactive armor does add something to the vehicles but apart from that there's not a whole lot there which is a real shame with world war 3 you can change the turrets you can change the armor which is visible on the tank you can change the guns the secondary guns the primary guns the countermeasures all sorts of different stuff and that definitely does add to the game i would say that at the minute world war 3 the customization is pretty decent but it's not got that depth to it that I'd really expect from a game boasting their customization to be the best that we've seen. I really do think as if they could do with more than just a weight system for the infantry and then maybe with the tanks you'd want to see a little bit more information on screen when you're applying these customization things. Do I have a tank that's going to be a lot slower, a lot quicker, faster reload, a lot more damage to infantry and then specific numbers and statistics that can help me choose my loadout? With the infantry, it seems as if you can apply an attachment to your weapon and the only thing that it penalizes you for is the weight and then you just end up with a slower soldier. But at the end of the day, a slower soldier isn't that much of a big deal. If you think of Battlefield 1, would you rather run around as a normal soldier with a bit more speed or as the sentry with the Villa Perosa or the MG15, I think it is. Of course, you're slower, but you're definitely more powerful. And if you could then alter your weapons as you can in World War 3, you can run around with a Pechenegg or an AK with a 60 round drum mag, 
a high powered scope and then you can have an RPG or a sniper on your back and a med kit if you choose to. I think that only being penalised for weight is a bit of a problem. They definitely need to have a limit on the amount of stuff you can carry. So if you do take a sniper on your back, you therefore can't have armour. Or if you do choose to take two really heavy weapons, you can't have armour. Or if you take the armour, you can only have access to one weapon and your secondary would have to be a pistol. There's a lot of stuff they need to change and alter. That being said, that's not got much to do with the way the game looks. The customization definitely adds to the game. The fact that you can customize your soldier extensively as well with this early access build of the game is great. This will of course need to be unlocked when the game comes out fully. At the minute, they've just given us access to everything, which is pretty cool to be able to check it out, but also it leaves you with nothing left to work towards when you're playing and therefore it does feel a little bit rubbish at times. Battlefield 4 customization is great and is the benchmark, in my opinion, for an FPS game like this. Finally, we can have a look at the metro section of the map on World War 3. Is it in Berlin? I think it might be. And there are some similarities to take. Although you don't have access to lifts or elevators on the World War 3 map, you do get the escalators and then a crashed metro train. Very similar to what you have in Battlefield 4 and 3. I think this is awesome and it would make a great setting for a TDM or a domination style game once they have improved the FPS performance and then maybe a bit of the gunplay and movement and animations that definitely need work so you can have a bit more fun in CQB. At the minute, it's a little bit like PUBG in terms of combat. You're often in situations where you're taking down enemies at longer ranges instead of closer ranges because you feel as if the combat is more consistent, which is very, very important in an FPS game, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think of these two games. Do you think World War 3 is a better looking version of BF4 purely when we're talking about the graphics or do you think Battlefield 4 is just reigning supreme even though it is an older game five years old now but it still looks fantastic in my opinion I'd personally say BF4 has the edge when it comes to destruction it definitely has the edge the only thing the World War 3 does better is the customization and the visuals on the customization and they're of course going to build on everything so there is a chance that Farm 51 make World War 3 a better looking game a better running game and then it will possibly challenge Battlefield 4 for that best looking modern military shooter, which I think Battlefield 4 still holds. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next video.